Hi folks, thanks for coming along to our little demonstration of learning journals here. It's nice to see um, a few of you in here today. Um, I'm guessing we've got a, a mix of people who have maybe seen the system and some who haven't. Maybe some of you are actually already on a free trial. Um, so a couple of things before we get started. Um, somewhere on your screen you should see a um, little box where you can type in questions and messages. Um, if anything comes up throughout the presentation that you want to ask me more about, send a message in there and I will try and answer it. Uh, I do want to try and stick to 30 minutes though. Um, I know everyone's very busy, especially this time of year. You've got a lot to be getting on with uh, for Christmas coming up. So um, if I can't get back to you on the presentation, I will uh, reply by email afterwards. Um, I'm assuming everyone can hear me and I hope you can. <coughs> so uh, it'd be good to hear from you if you do have any questions uh, throughout this. So as I say, I do want to keep this to 30 minutes, so let's get started straight away. What you should be able to see on your screen now is uh, the Learning Journals website. So you've probably been there before and had a wee look around it. I'll explain a little bit about where Learning Journals came from. Um, it's actually from a nursery in Edinburgh. So I've got a nursery myself. Uh, and we run that um, in the city centre of Edinburgh. And about two or three years ago, we realised that the process of taking observations was taking such a long time to complete, um, especially to the standards that we wanted it done in the nursery and that our local authority wanted it done to as well. So we looked around and found there wasn't really anything suitable um, that was easy to use and simple and gave parents the access that we wanted as well. So we decided to build our own. Um, Long story short, we had an inspection and they suggested we should maybe share this with other nurseries as well. And that's what's happened and that's where it all come from. So um, but two and a half years later, here we are. We've got um, many, many more features than we had in those early days. And if I flick over here, this is the um, this is the site as it is at the moment. So I've got a demonstration version of our site here. What I've done is set it up for a typical private nursery. And the objective of Learning Journals really is to enable staff to take observations a lot more quickly and to allow parents to access their children's information a lot more easily. Um, so the way we've set this up here is a typical private nursery, which would have a baby room, a toddler room and a preschool room. So these are really just ways of organising your children's profiles. Um, you can have as many rooms as you want or as few rooms as you want, and you can have any pictures or names or anything like that. This is all customizable to you. As I say, it's really just a way of organising the children's profiles. So if I click into our preschool room here, <clears throat> we can see all the children in this room. So just a demonstration account. So we've only got the five, six, seven, eight children here. Um, you can have as many children as you want. There's no limit to that. There's no limit to the number of staff accounts that you can have or parent accounts that you can have. And there's no limit to the number of observations that you can upload or... Uh, photographs or videos or any of that sort of stuff so once you've got an account you can add as much content to it as you want and we really encourage you to do that so each one of these represents a child's um, A4 ring binder I guess you would maybe have it at the moment um, and that would contain all the children's observations so we've got some basic information here uh, but if I click on this child it will open up their folder and we can see um, all the observations that have been taken for this child. Now, this child here is on the curriculum for excellence. What I'll maybe do is uh, look at Abby here. Abby is our child uh, based on the EYFS. So if I open up the, children's, the child's profile for Abby, we can see that we've got um, on the left hand side, we've got her basic information and some extra options. I'll not be able to get into all these today. Um, on the right hand side, we've got all the observations taken for this child and they go from newest to oldest so if i scroll back all the way down we'll see all the oldest images for this now this this particular demonstration has got the faces blurred here you wouldn't normally have that although you can choose to do that if you want to with a third party application and that would be up to you if i focus on a particular abs um, observation we've got the date the observation was taken the curriculum the child's following the different curricular areas that this particular observation um, applies to <coughs> excuse me um, we've also got the description. So this is the part, this is really the only part that's added in by the staff member. Um, everything else is kind of done for you. Um, we've got the name of the staff member that took this observation. So in this case, it's just learning journals. 
we've got photograph here and you can actually have up to four photographs or videos we've we've enabled that as well now that's an option that you can have and there's a comment section and comments can be left by parents by staff in our industry we actually um, allow the children with the assistance of the teachers to enter comments as well we've got a tab here for the different learning outcomes and you'll see all the different statements from the curriculum that are um, displayed down here um, I say this child's following the curriculum, uh, sorry, the EYFS curriculum. Dif there are different curricula available in different parts of the country. So in Scotland, you would be following the curriculum for excellence, for example, and that's split down into different subcategories for your different local authorities as well. Um, so you can have as many observations as you want, as I say, and all that would happen is that you would just scroll down here and see all the observations that have happened for this child. You can go back and back and back till the beginning of time until this child has actually joined the nursery. So if I scroll back up the top, we can see we've got the different um, curricular areas from the EYFS. And if you're in Scotland, this would be similar. So it would say literacy in English, numeracy in math, health and well-being, for example. <clears throat> we can use these as filters. So if we want to see only the observations that contain self-confidence um, observations, we can do that. Now there happens to be none in this test here, but we can click on any other ones and they would bring all these up here. So there's our making relationships ones. And we can see that one there. The system is designed to be used on tablets, so for example, iPads or Galaxy, Samsung tablet, or Tesco Huddle, or, or whatever it would be. It looks exactly the same on that as it does on here. And what we would do is when we see Abby doing something that we want to um, record and we want to add to her um, profile, we would just click on this Add Observation button up the top here. So we've tried to make it as simple and easy as possible um, to use for everybody. I know that um, there is such a varying degree of comfort and ability with technology throughout nurseries up and down the country. So we've tried to make this as easy and as super simple to use as we possibly can. So really all you've got to do is follow the instructions here and the system will do everything else for you. So we choose the curricular area that um, we are concerned with. So let's choose maths and numbers here. Describe your observation. And this is the part that um, the practitioner has to write in. It's really important that you do a good quality observation. The system won't help you take a better observation, it will just help you take it quicker. So you need to make sure that you're, you and your team are doing that um, properly. That might be an internal conversation that you want to have a discussion about, about what a good observation looks like. So here I'm just going to write something very sim simple though for the purposes of this demonstration. Abby was learning to count to 10 for example. So that's very, very basic and you would never have something as simple as that. Um, but it'll do for what we're looking for today. In the next stage, we've got a, an opportunity to add in next steps. So let's imagine that Abby was learning to count to 10, but she was getting her numbers around the wrong way or she was missing some numbers out. So a next step that we might add in for Abby here would be to consistently count to 10, getting the numbers in the right order, not missing any out. Um, and you can actually choose to track this next step as well. I might not get to it today, but each child has got a next step tracker, so you can actually see the outstanding next steps for every child um, and see what they're working towards. But not every observation will need a next step, and certainly not every next step will need to be tracked. So this section here is optional. You don't have to enter anything here if you don't want to. Um, the date and time of the activity, that is all automatic, so the system has a clock in it, and it will, it will take care of that for you. But if it was something that you'd actually observed a few days ago, but you haven't actually managed to write the observation up yet, you can just click on here and change the date with the calendar. Um, the time works out the same way. Uploading a photo comes next, and this is where you'll see the biggest benefit, in certainly in time saving. So at the moment, if you're not using an online system, what you might find is that you've got to um, take a digital camera, take a photograph, um, connect it to the computer, download it, print that out, Make sure there's ink in the printer and paper and all that sort of stuff. So that is a huge time consuming hassle. When we use the system and when we use an iPad, when we click on this button on the iPad, it will ask if you want to take a new video or photo or upload an existing one. On my um, computer here, obviously, it's just going to go through my um, hard drive. So here's some demonstration images I've got. I'm going to upload a photo of this tree. Um, and then I'll maybe choose another one, actually, and add another photo in. So let's go for a picture of, uh, what will I choose today? This chestnut. I think that's actually an acorn, actually. If there's anyone here who's an expert on chestnuts, they can maybe tell me if that's right or wrong. Um, 
So we've got our images and you can upload videos as well. You can have up to four, which is really good for demonstrating a process. So the first image could be the child with a blank sheet of paper. The second, they're actually making some marks and doing some work. And by the third, they've maybe got your, your full piece of work that they've created. So you'll document that entire process through one observation. So moving on to the next stage, this is where we connect it back to the curriculum. So what you're seeing here are all the different experiences and outcomes broken down into the age groups um, for the EYFS. And if this was the Curriculum for Excellence, it would be all the E's and O's for the Curriculum for Excellence and for any other curriculum that's on the system, that would be displayed down here. And what you're um, asked to do is just choose whichever learning outcome applies to the observation you're just doing. So here's an example here, this one, I'll just choose this one. <coughs> Counts objects to 10 and beginning to count to 10. So that would apply to what we've just done here. You can actually add as many of these as you want. Um, I'll maybe add a couple of random ones in. And you can go across different curricular areas as well. So let's say it's also to do with making relationships because we're maybe doing a group activity here. And we add that one in there as well. Now you'll see, if I go back, scroll back up the top, and I'll go back into my numbers one because there's a few examples there. These numbers down the right-hand side here, what these are telling you is that this child has had one observation linked to this statement already. They've had three observations linked to that statement also. So at this stage, you're getting an idea of coverage, where the children has had experience, where the child has not, where there may be gaps in the child's learning. Um, and as I say, you can add as many of these different outcomes and statements as you want. So if we scroll back up the top, the experience and outcomes that we added are actually up the top here. Now, what you're asked to do are, before you move on, is rate the child's understanding of what they've done using this traffic light system in this panel over here. Now, what this does is really an internal, um, it's, it's for internal use only, so parents don't get to see this, and it will let you assess where you think the child is in their learning compared to where they should be or their peers or however you want to use that traffic light system. You make a selection just with these little buttons, just like this. Um, and you can delete them using this button here if you don't want to add them in the first place. Moving on to the next stage, on the EYFS, this is the characteristics of effective learning. So you're probably all familiar with the characteristics of effective learning here, broken down into the th three categories. We've added one in here. Again, it works the same way. Use this green button. Um, the characteristics are optional. You do not have to actually add any of these in. If you don't want to, that's up to you. And if you don't want to add anything in, you just move on to the next stage. And the final stage is about connecting it to previous next steps. So if we remember back to our first stage, we could have added in and tracked a next step. Any tracked next steps will appear on subsequent observations at this stage here. So in, your, in our right-hand column, what we're seeing are the outstanding next steps for this child. And there's actually only one for this child here, which is to encourage Abby to perform stories, use her imagination, using the drama area. Now, what you'll probably find is that children will have you know, quite a few more next steps than this uh, that they're always working to at each time. And uh, what the system is asking us is, does the observation that we're just doing, Abby was learning to count to 10, does that achieve any of the outstanding next steps that Abby is working towards? Now, in this case, it doesn't. But if it did, we would use this add button over here to connect the previous observation, the one that was taken back in April 2014, with our current observation that we're doing today, and it would connect these two observations together so that we could see when the next step was identified, when it was achieved, and what Abby actually did to actually achieve that observation. So you would see that record of achievement for that particular next step. You can choose to then publish the observation, save it for later, or delete it. If you publish the observation, a parent will be able to see it when they log in. Um, so don't publish anything that you're not ready for a parent to see just yet. Um, you can still, even if an observation has been published, you can still go back and um, change that observation, update the description, change photographs, all that sort of thing. So even though it's published, it's not set in stone, it can always be changed. If you save it for later, um, it will not be visible on the child's profile. So you might, if you're not happy with your description yet, you might save it for later to go back to another time. A really, really handy feature is this one here, publish this observation for other children. So this is where you do a group activity. If I check that box and click on finish, if we imagine that Amy, um, sorry, Abby was doing this with a lot of her friends, uh, this group activity. So what you wouldn't want to have to do is copy and paste everything out to multiple profiles all the time. 
So what we do is we select the children that were involved in this. So we'll say that Anya, Stuart and Toby here, they're all involved in this particular observation with Abby. And we want to copy it over to their profiles too. So that will copy everything over. Now you do have to be careful because whatever you have in your description box up the top here, that will be copied over to the children as well. So here we are saying that Abby was learning to count to 10. If we copy that over as it is, it will say in Annie's profile that Abby was learning to count to 10 and the same in Stuart's and Toby's. So we either want to generalize what we've got in our description up here, or we can use our little short code that we've got down the bottom. And if we use that in here, which is just typing in the word first name in these square brackets, and the instructions are down here, replace the child's name in the box above with the code first name, one word, all lowercase inside square brackets. And when we do that, when we copy over, it will then replace this code with the first name of each child. So it would then say Stuart was learning to count to 10 in Stuart's profile and Toby was learning to count to 10 in Toby's profile. So very simple, really easy to use, and it's a really nice way to personalize observations that you're doing for many children at one time. If I click back to our observations here, we'll then see the observation we just took for Abby. So we've got it taken today, we've got the, um, the curricular areas that we've applied to this one here. We've got our description, and here we can actually update if we want to. Um, but Abby missed out number seven, for example. We can update that. <clears throat> we've got our photographs, so we can see the two photographs that we got of our mystery chestnut or acorn and our tree. And if I click on this tab, we'll see the different experiences and outcomes from the curriculum that we've chosen and our ratings that we applied to them as well. So 95% of the time, that is all that you and your teams will be doing when taking observations. That's the core of the system and that's what we designed it for, to take observations and make sure you can do it quickly and easily. Hopefully that's been clear to you how to do that. If anyone does have any questions on the observation creation process, do please stick it in the chat box um, and I will answer any questions that I can. Um, but it's very, very simple. Anybody can use it. I've taken maybe about 10 or 10 or 12 minutes to go through that observation there, explaining it in detail. But hopefully you can see that once you've taken an observation a few times, once you've got, pro got used to the process, you'll be taking observations in sort of three or four minutes very, very quickly. Um, and very, very easily as well. Okay, so some other some other features that we want to talk about this morning. And I'm still planning on keeping to our 30 minutes. If, I've just clicked on the Home tab here. Now what this does, um, this is the screen that everybody sees when they first log in. And what we are looking at here uh, is a summary of the recent observations for um, this account, this nursery. Now here you can focus on a particular child. If you want to focus on a particular child's observations, you can do that here. So we would just, for example, we would take, select Anya's name and we can see all the observations that have been taken for Anya in this time period. So that's December. We can focus on a particular staff member as well if you want to. So this is more useful if you want to, um, I, I say keep an eye, but it's really not about checking up on the staff members, but you can really get an overview of the observation that each staff member has done or the number of observations that they've done. You can look only at um, specific rooms if you want to, and you'll see the time period already. Next to our observations tab, we've got one named notifications. And what happens here is a child will appear on this list <coughs> if they've had no observations in over seven days. <clears throat> so this is very, very handy for um, those children who they might be in just a couple of times a week or maybe on a couple of sessions a week or they may, uh, they may have been off ill or for whatever reason they've just not had an observation taken. They will appear on this list if that's the case and you will be alerted to that via a weekly email. Um, now obviously these children here, 123 days, 100, this is unrealistic in a, in a real nursery. But if it got to, in, in seven days might might be uh, too soon for you. But if it gets to sort of 10, 12, 14, 20 days without an observation, you'll want to maybe speak to the staff member and ask them, uh, just make sure they're keeping an eye on this child and make sure they get an observation taken. The number of observations you take is obviously completely up to you. And you'll want to set that expectation with your parents as well, so that they're not expecting to see an observation every day because that's unrealistic. 
Um, and you should really maybe have an internal discussion about how many observations each child should expect to see. We'd suggest anywhere between three to five observations um, per month. Um, but again, that is completely flexible and up to you. What you'll probably find is that you'll actually be doing many, many more observations than that because it's so much easier to take these observations. Next to the notifications, we've got our parent comments. Now, there are no comments in this one because this is a, a test account. Um, but I can tell you that in our own nursery, we have literally hundreds of comments every month from um, parents using the system. We would generally, before this, struggle to get parents to contribute and engage in the children's profiles because simply they didn't have time when they're picking up, they want to pick their child up and go home or when they're dropping off, they want to drop off and get to work. And it might always be mum that, that drops off or it might always be dad that drops off. So um, it was very, very difficult to get parents to come in and actually leave comments. But because they can use this system and log in from home, from work, on the bus, on their phone, wherever they might be, they can get access to the children's profiles or their own child's profile and <coughs> they can leave comments. And the comments that we receive are absolutely lovely. And it's great to see, it's great for the staff to be able to see that parents do take notice of the hard work that they put into looking after and educating their child. Uh, it's uh, a lot of comments you will get along the lines of, oh, you know, fantastic or well done. But there are some that are really nice, which will demonstrate especially to inspectors that you've got a close relationship between the nursery and the home and that you're both working towards same goals of educating this child. Um, you can look back up to the last two years of comments and literally, oh, here we go, actually. Here's some test comments we've got here. So this is what the last two years of comments look like for this particular one. They're all just tests, obviously. Um, and I'd uh, encourage you to uh, get parents to have a look at that because it's, it's such a great resource. I'm not going to look into the reports tab at the moment. Um, you can set up your own reports, but it's going to be something that's going to take a little bit longer than what we've got time for this morning to look into. You can create things like end of term reports or summary reports or ad hoc reports or upload your own templates and documents and all that sort of thing. But that's possible in there for you as well. Um, I just want to quickly go through um, a couple of other things on the children's profiles before, before we have to leave. So if we think back to our... Um, uh, red, amber, green when we were doing our um, uh, taking our observation. Where that feeds back into is our learning tracker. So if I click on the learning tracker for this particular child, what we will see here is an overview for this particular child for different parts of the curriculum. So this is our child that's on the curriculum for excellence and we can see here which parts they've um, experienced and which parts they haven't. So the grey areas are areas of the health and well-being area of this curriculum that have never been um, experienced by this particular child. We can quickly jump into um, this part of the curriculum and we can see the different experiences and outcomes for this as well. So um, for those of you in England, uh, this would, if this was on the EYFS one, we would have our age bands here. So we'd have our eight to 20 months or whatever it is. And we would see all the different statements below that. We can see the number of observations linked to each statement. So, for example, this one here, we've had no observations linked to that. Now, it's unrealistic to expect that you will be able to take an observation in every single, for every single statement while a child is with you at nursery. So for that reason, we allow you to manually make a, a suggestion on this. So we can say that even though we don't have any evidence of this or observation at this time, we do know that this child is secure or green or whatever green means to you in this part of the curriculum. If you leave it as auto, it will do it based on what the um, system has done based on your observations that you've input. So if I put this back to auto, this should just jump back to, yeah. So um, you can do this with any of them and all of them and you can work your way down and through there. Um, that's for that particular child. I'm going to very briefly show you for a group of children as well. Uh, that was the wrong one, sorry. So for a group of children, we're just about to launch our cohort tracker. And if I add this in here. Now, this is a um, test account. So unfortunately, we don't have very much information in this one here. But if we look at, uh, look at our, our level, because there's actually going to be more in that there in our preschool room. So um, hopefully this makes sense to you. So we've got the different parts of the curriculum here, and we've got what this child, this each child has been rated for each different part of the curriculum. Uh, 
we can click on each of these and we can overwrite what the system is saying. So it's based on what we've input the system, it's saying it's red, but we can go through and we can make adjustments to this as well. So you can print this sort of thing out, share that with parents uh, and share it with your team more importantly, actually. Um, the basics of things like adding, uh, sorry, there's one more thing I actually want to go back to in this here. We've got, an, what we're really keen on is um, allowing the parents greater uh, access to contribute to their children's profiles. So you're able to add these custom elements down the left hand side here. Now this one says star moments, but you can name this anything you want. So I've seen it as wider achievements or wow moments or achievements from home, whatever it is you want to do. But parents get access to this section here and they can actually contribute to it as well. So at the moment, up until about 11 a.m. this morning, because we're about to push an update live, it's only text that is um, available for the parents to enter. But after today, they're going to be able to upload photographs as well. So if you imagine a parent could add in things like this, Amy can now swim with their armbands, and we could have a photograph of that, or Amy was riding a bike. These sort of things, or anything that a parent wants to contribute, you will they will be able to upload into this section here. So it's almost like a mini observation from home. This is really going to um, strengthen the bond between the nursery and home and close that gap between the learning at the nursery and the learning at home as well. We'll get a much greater overview of the picture of the child's learning and the staff members will be able to see um, just exactly what the child gets up to at home and it will give you a greater understanding of that child and that family. So really looking forward to that. There's going to be a new tab on this home tab here for parent contributions. So you'll be able to be kept up to date with that. So a parent contributions tab here, you'll be able to see when new ones have been added in the same way that parent comments have been added in here. Just a couple of minutes left. So um, if anyone does have any questions, please, please, please do get in touch. Um, there's it's very very simple to set your system up when you receive your login details if you decide to go for our free 30-day trial it will already be set up with the rooms because i've got that information from you already you'll then just have to add your children in which is just a case of adding child and you just fill out this form here so very very simple uh first name last name date of birth all that sort of stuff here we can tag them if they've got any additional support needs or english as additional language um, the same happens with staff. It's very, very simple. You just add a new member of staff, choose their role, and the same with parents. So it's first name, last name, email address, and the same with parents. Here's a list of all our parents here. We could add a new parent. Um, we can um, uh, connect each child to their profile. We can see when a parent last logged in, and we can see all the comments that a parent has left as well. So very, very simple. What I'd encourage you guys to do, okay, hold on, we've got, we have a question. How do you maintain security safeguarding children? So um, that's from Victoria. So Victoria, each account user, um, you'll notice here, if I go back into our staff one here and edit anyone, you notice each user has this name in brackets. So what these are, these are their uh, usernames. So each user has got their own username. They use that to log in along with a password and a PIN number. So they have to create their own password and their own PIN number. You as a staff member will never know what anyone else's password or PIN number is. That's completely hidden from you and it's completely hidden from us as well. It's all encrypted. So if someone forgets their password or PIN number, we're not able to tell them what it is. They have to reset it. And in the same way as you would reset your password or PIN number for many other online services, for example, Facebook, if you forget your password, they email you a link to the email address that you provided them and that will expire after a short period of time and you'll have that opportunity to then create a new password. It is important though, when we go back to our parent tab here, if we have a look at this, we can see that, uh, for example, William Gilbert here has the ability to see the profiles of Anya Floyd and Stuart Gilbert. So he's got access to these two children. We control that with this children button over here. <coughs> it is up to your responsibility uh, it's sorry, it's your responsibility to make sure that um, the correct child has been connected to the correct parent. So here we've got William Gilbert's children. We choose from our list of children who he has access to using this button down here. And if I remove Anya from here, it will mean that William does no longer has access to this particular child. You will also have to consider when doing group observations, if you're uploading a photograph of a group of children, um, any profile that that photograph gets added to, obviously the parents of that child or those children will be able to see that photograph which may contain other children in it. 
So you will need to gain permission from all your staff um, parents that they're happy with this procedure. Um, this would be the same for permissions for things like photographs at sports day or at Christmas shows, all that sort of stuff. It's going to be the same thing. And there may be legitimate reasons why a parent wouldn't want to give permission for that. And if a parent doesn't, then uh, you would just need to ensure that their child is not included in any group photographs that are going to be shared on other children's profiles. Claire has asked a question as also, uh, well, we'll just keep going for a bit. Claire's asked a question, when staff log in, do they only see the children they are a key worker to? So Claire, by default, yes, they do. So when they first log in, if I was um, logging in as a staff member here, and I, if I was Angela, and let's say that Angela has, you can see her children here are Abby, Alistair, Anya, uh, another couple down here. So when, I, when Angela first logged, she would only see these children, but she's able to access all the other child profiles as well. So for her ease of use, she's able to see only her children, but she can then use this um, up, the, up the top here, this drop down that says uh, all staff's children, and she would just click that. So when she logs in, it would she would see, uh, wrong one, sorry. When she logs in, she would see this view. That's what Angela would see. But if she wants to take an observation on any other child, she would just click all staff, and that's how it would work. Because what we want, all staff to be able to do is take an observation on any child because Angela might be off and one of and Charlene uh, might want to take an observation on one of her children or they might be in a group together that sort of thing hopefully that makes sense um, if anyone has any other questions please do we'll, we've got a couple more minutes here well we don't really but I'll keep going for a couple more minutes um, if you are not already on the system and you want to try it out for yourself go to our website which is learningjournals.co.uk Click on the link that says free trial. And when you go there, <coughs> um, you can fill this form in. When I get all the information that's in here, then I will create an, uh, an account for you, send through the details, and you can try it completely free for up to 30 days uh, and try it out for yourself. Make sure it's going to work for you and your teams. I would try and get some parents involved because really I do see the parent involvement side of this being the biggest benefit. So get some parents involved, get their feedback and all that sort of stuff as well. You might, I uh, should have probably talked about pricing, which I completely forgot to do. So I'll quickly go into our price down here. So it's very, very simple. Um, if you have over 20 children, the price is £275 a year plus VAT. And that is all there is to it. So support is included. There's no extra costs involved with that. You do have to supply anything like your own devices or tablets or all that sort of stuff. But any tablet will work as long as you can get internet accessible. And actually, we're working on a offline version of the app for those of you who may have patchy internet access or struggle with Wi-Fi in your nursery as well. So the very most soft space, two hundred seventy-five pound plus VAT. There are extras if you want. If you do want access to the video uploads, that's a little bit extra because of the size of a video and the storage um, incurred by us. The storage costs are a little bit higher for videos, obviously, because video files are a lot longer. Um, if there's no other questions, well, thank you very, very much for coming along. I hope this has been informative for you. If you do have any questions, though, you can um, email me, info at learningjournals.co.uk. I'm just going to pop that into the chat. There we go. There's my email address. If anyone would like to get in touch with me, my name's David. I don't think I actually introduced myself. That was very silly. Should have done that at the very beginning. Um, yeah, any questions anyone does have, please do get in touch. We'd love to see you try get a free trial and give us some feedback on what you think. Uh, and uh, I will be able to answer any questions that anybody has from there. Thanks very much for coming along. I will be sending out a recording of this video to everybody and maybe putting it on our website as well. Um, so if there's any, if anyone missed it earlier on, uh, look out for an email later on today, which will have a link to um, to the video for this session. Thanks very much, everybody. Um, we'll speak to you later.